find at uh, our, our financial security. Dot org. Yep. Um, you know, keep keep up with what they're up to. Uh, Representative Miller has pushed very strong amendments. Uh, and an amazing, amazing legislator. And Peggy and Ace is doing a great job uh, mitigating the real horror and nightmare of the foreclosure crisis. Um, so what I'm going to do a little bit, I'm going to talk a little bit at a high level about what Dodd Frank is supposed to do and how it's trying to be undermined. I'm going to talk, and then I'll talk a little bit about uh, foreclosures and stuff that you can do when you leave here. Um, of all the battles that are out there right now, this has to be the most disempowering from a grassroots point of view. Um, you know, the money is so powerful and it is so in everywhere that it warps all the normal mechanisms of democracy. That said, there is ideas here, and it's good to understand what kind of ideas are driving the different agents about what the role of the financial sector is in our economy. Um, you know, with all of the deregulation over the past 30 and 40 years, which goes with, you know, Reagan and you know, neoliberals and deunionization and globalization, all kinds of stuff, the financial sector deregulation was always this weird spot for people because there is good reasons to have strong regulation on the financial sector. We know that this sector, regardless of what you think of what it means to have a manufacturing sector, we know that the financial sector is sort of different than everything else. Um, regardless of your political persuasions. Um, even people who are centrist should understand that. And they are relearning it in real time over the past three years. Um, so what, what did Dodd-Frank do? Um, I work for the uh, Roosevelt Institute, so I'm always uh, hustling FDR's legacy. So I like to think of Dodd-Frank as trying to modernize a lot of, and, and reintroduce the, the classic New Deal financial reforms into the modern era. So what did what did the what did the uh, the New Deal do in banking reform? It, it created this thing called FDIC. They realized banks weren't like pizza shops, where if a pizza shop goes out of business, the pizza shop across the street is happy because now it's going to have more business. When a bank collapses, it causes runs in other banks, and that's true of things that don't call themselves bank but still function the same way. They still take in money and lend out money. Um, something like you know J.P. Morgan or or. Bear Stearns or all these other firms that you know don't exist or only exist now with the government's backing. So what it does is it creates something called resolution authority, which Brad Miller referred to earlier, and it extends some of the banking regulations, capital requirements, disclosures, to a lot of firms. Right? Um, you know, those firms don't like that. They don't like having to think of themselves as not too big to fail. They don't like creating living wills, which you know, establish that they can be taken down. They don't like being regulated. They like doing they like the status quo quite a bit. So they fight that very hard. Um, another thing that the New Deal did was something, uh, it created um, uh, exchanges for stocks. And so this goes back to uh, Louis Brandeis, like one of the original progressive thinkers in other people's money. He said, look, the, the stock market at that point, 1905, this is really like nebulous, cloudy thing. There's a lot of insiders. There's a lot of, there's only a few people, so they can really squeeze people on the other end. It's kind of like this monopolistic kind of economy. Let's just make it really transparent. If you've ever actually heard the phrase, uh, sunlight is the best uh, disinfectant, that's actually from Louis Brandeis's Other People's Money. He is specifically talking about stock exchanges. So what does Dodd Frank do? It creates a requirement that derivatives, which if you know what a derivative is, you know, if you don't, I'm not going to be able to explain to you in the next <laughs> time. But these very complicated financial instruments that have huge risks embedded with them that can really spiral out of control, it forces them to go through exchanges. Uh, and, and, and clear, if, if you know the term. Basically, it means you have to put up money. You have to make this information public. That's going to allow people to hold each other in check a little bit better. It's going to make sure that when things get panicky, we kind of know who owns what so we can take down the firm, which you know, good derivatives regulation helps with resolution. It helps keep firms from being too big to fail. Um, Another thing is, um, from the New Deals, they created the Security and Exchange Commission. There's all these complicated uh, products that no one actually sort of understood their obligations. There's these firms that sort of would hide terms or make terms very like, clouded and difficult to understand. And you know, but people were putting their money in them, and people wanted to put their money in them because they built wealth that way. But their wealth building was predicated on people ripping them off with bad information. That sounds exactly like the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau to me. Um, you know, consumers now have a lot of products. You know, internet and the globalization of capital and technology has opened up doors for people to have new kinds of instruments, or, or people to do all kinds of new investments as consumers. But we've found that, you know, they're mostly being ripped off. 
with bad contracts, a lack of accountability, confusing terms, kickbacks in the middlemen, all the stuff Brad Miller and everyone else talk about. So that modernizes that. Now, of course, people don't like that. People like the status quo with consumer finance. Um, if you look, we'll talk about it in a second, but like when Elizabeth Warren is proposing for the CFPB, like, you know, she is painted as some sort of like crazy socialist or something. But when, she's basically saying, like, we need to make contracts clear. And the SEC, when, if you actually look at what Roosevelt wrote about the SEC, he was like, the SEC is not going to tell you that something's safe. Like, we're not going to like guarantee that stocks are like good investments or anything. We're just going to guarantee that the information is accountable to someone. That's ultimately what we want consumer finance to look like. And then the last thing they did was uh, Glass-Steagall, which divided out investment banks from commercial banks. Um, we didn't, uh, Dodd Frank has something called the Volcker Rule, which depending on why, depending on how you want to approach it, it says we need to, it is good that people do crazy speculative things. People take bets in the same way opening a small business to bet in. You know, I, I think they do too much of it, but on some level we want the financial sector to be making bets and trying to you know, find, find interesting investments. We don't need to backstop it with, with our, uh, the, the safety net of, this, of the banking system, you know, of having you know, the Federal Reserve and all kinds of other things. And also, it's actually, in practice, very difficult for people to understand if they're being ripped off when they work with someone like Goldman Sachs. <laughs> and that's a big problem, right? Because like, ultimately, like, you know, it's a market economy. Like, I should be able to go buy pizza and not think that I'm you know, secretly being ripped off or being poisoned <laughs> or, you know, or ultimately something terrible is going to happen to me for doing something that like, I want to do. And people want to work with Goldman Sachs. Well, people want to work with an investment bank, but they don't want to think they're being sold a toxic bag of goods. So the book rule also puts in some, some walls there. So, we're, um, so that, that's the kind of liberal vision, right? This is about accountability. It's about having good rules. It's about leveling the playing field between actors who have a lot of power and people who don't have much power. And that's, that's kind of the government we want. Um, we want power to be in check. We want there to be good information. We think things like transparency are virtuous. Now, what does the right think? You know, the right obviously likes Wall Street money, and, you know, so, so do Democrats. But, like, but what, what if, when they look out there, and I think this is important to recognize for things like Wisconsin, is they, they look out at a world where the rich have it too hard, and lucky, ducky, poor people have it too easy. <laughs> and, like, like, it's ridiculous, but it, once you understand that, like, have you ever heard the phrase lucky ducky Google? It's awesome. It's this Wall Street Journal edit, uh, editorial from uh, the early uh, W years where it's like, these lucky duckies who make 10 grand a year who don't pay any taxes. <laughs> it's like, but like, once you understand that that is the worldview, everything else makes sense, right? So like, if you think that ultimately creditors, people with money, people who lend out things, have it really bad in our country, and debtors, people who have debts, have it too easy, you understand why Cato, for instance, opposed Cranbaum, which was basically saying, let's make bankruptcy, which is this very liberal, awesome way of distributing losses. Like, we don't like Cranbaum because we respect contracts. And then I, I had a fight with someone at Cato about this because um, when the whole robo-signing thing came up where you know, banks are essentially abusing contracts in real time, very openly, I was like, well, doesn't that upset you? Like, that's also a contract. And they're like, well, no, because that's just technicalities. <laughs> <laughs> and like, like, my head almost exploded. It was a like scan. So I couldn't think of anything to say. Shook. Uh, but like, but once you understand, it's like, well, no, like, look, you know, creditors should have much more power, and poor people should like have to go to jail if they don't pay their debts. Then that makes much more sense, and you understand where conservatives are coming from, or libertarians, and the whole the whole pack of them. Um, and that's why they're ultimately fighting Dodd Frank is because they don't want to see a level playing field in this space. They they think like Ayn Rand and all these other people that you know, the, you know all this virtuous stuff is coming from rich people. Why don't you stop complaining? Now, in so much as they say that about like oil company executives, like you know that's that's something that they can believe honestly, I guess. But when it comes from the financial sector, you notice why the schizophrenia is kicked in on the right, where they're blaming community groups for like bullying Lehman Brothers. Like, like, I, don't know if you've ever been, I don't know if you've ever been in Lehman Brothers and been in a community organizing office, but the idea that like, if, you, if you had to imagine one bullying the other in terms of money and power, it's, it's the wrong direction. Um, so then, I mean, what, what can you do? Yeah, so I'm, I'm you, know, you, you came here to hear us talk, but I'm now going to put it on you and say, we need help, so what can you do? 
first thing you can do is obviously keep up with, with the people on the panel. Which, you know, not, not me, they're, they're doing the real work here. Um, educate yourself about the foreclosure crisis. There is now officially enough information online that if you are willing to put in a weekend, you can pick it up. Check out sites like uh, Google Foreclosure Fraud, and you'll find a bunch of sites. Uh, foreclosure, uh, I'm blanking on, on what's the, is it? Foreclosure Hamlet. Foreclosure Hamlet's a very good one. Eve Smith at Naked Capitalism writes a lot about it. There's a, a website of uh, bankruptcy lawyers called Credit Slips. Uh, Dave Dane at Fire Dog Lake, Zach Carter at Huffington Post. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of people who are really doing great work. Um, you know, the whole Huffington Post team, uh, Shaheen, and I don't want to put out, they're all of them are doing great work, I don't want to isolate them. But um, there's, there's enough information that you can kind of learn about it. It's important to understand that the foreclosure crisis is not, a, it, is, it is being generated by the fact that there are a lot of people unemployed and it's difficult to find work. But the actual mechanism is that it is the continuation of the insane Wall Street behavior in the 2000s. At this point, I think people sort of understand that Wall Street came up with this insane scheme to like take mortgages and slice them up and through you know alchemy and turn them into super safe investments. But that same mechanism that allowed them to do that was predicated on them like not keeping track of records or or having the people who are ultimately responsible for making sure this debt is paid be someone in a call center in a third world country, or someone who makes $6 an hour, or someone who is not sophisticated or in, enabled to actually deal with bad debt in a sophisticated way. Um, so learn about that and get involved with that. Um, there's a lot of, you know, obviously, you know, a lot of people are talking about what President Obama can and cannot do in this environment. Uh, we're going to talk about an extra stimulus bill, or does he have to make concessions to get the debt ceiling increased? There are things we can do right now with the government about the housing crisis that require no 60th senator. They require no you know, uh, nomination or anything. They can investigate foreclosure fraud. They can enable the GSEs to refinance loans. There are things that can be done that would radically increase the quality of life in this country for people who are suffering that are being left on the table in part because of pressure from Wall Street and because we do not have enough pressure yet on the administration and officials. Um, uh, also, uh, Google uh, Register of Deeds. Um, you know, this is impacting every local community, right? The, the cost of a foreclosure, well known. Um, and, you know, local officials are well incentivized, you know, it, to the extent that Democrats running for national office need to raise a lot of money so maybe they need to be nice to Wall Street. Your local register of deeds does not get taken out for dinner by Goldman Sachs. And he is feeling the brunt of this whole thing on his community. So check out, check out your local officials who do have tools and do have power. Um, support Elizabeth Warren for the CFPB. I don't think this is a hard sell for anyone here. Um, but if it is. But, but understand what the conservatives are fighting on. Because they're saying that we're not going to nominate anyone unless you um, turn it into a committee defund it, and uh, cripple the independence of it. If you ask me what are the strengths of the CFPB, if you ask me what the strengths are, I would say the funding stream's guaranteed so Congress can't screw with it. It's fairly independent, and you, know, you have a strong chief who can guide it. They know what they're doing with trying to destroy it. So fight on those terms. And also watch for, um, there's, there's the OCC, um, there's a person named, we're, I'm, I'm blanking on it. Old one or new one? The new, the new OCC you proposed. Um, uh, Greenberg? OCC? OCC. Yeah, they just uh, uh, an FTC guy. Um, Curry. Curry, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Thomas Curry. Keep an eye on, on the OCC is, is a pretty bad bank regulator. Anything you don't like, uh, the OCC is probably a little bit behind it, from uh, <laughs> overturning state laws to blocking the attorney general's investigating. Like, uh, but if we can get good people in those offices, that's important. And so the you know CFPB is important, but actually, I won't say it's too loud, but like the OCC might be more important if we can get someone really good in there. I know, I know, it's a scandal. Uh, if we can get someone good in the OCC, we can overturn a lot of damage. And the big thing is, there's a lot of these rules are going to be delayed. In 2012, we will probably have a Republican Senate. The median Republican senator will be insane <laughs> by any rational definition of like the median voter. Um, anything that needs to be accomplished after 2012 with rule writing and financial reform will be very difficult to do. 
So it's important we start locking down the gains we've made from Dodd Frank. It's, it's, I mean, it's not a perfect bill, and I'm not trying to oversell it. But the gains we have made, we need to lock them down and lock them down quick. Good. All right.